Louis. Welcome to Eden Koi Pond. I hopefully you enjoy this week's video. Uh, any questions, any comments, just drop them below. If you could subscribe, that would be a fantastic. Um, I don't know why, but as I've mentioned before, it's just something my kids tell me that I have to say. So if you would subscribe, do it. I don't know. The main thing is enjoy and hopefully it's helpful to someone. Catch you later. Smile, ladies. No. <laughs> the only one not doing any work is me. Old pond. It's gone. Wow! Guess what? The fiberglass man's been. I'm sorry, I didn't do any videoing. But trying to get ready for everyone. The electrician's coming tomorrow to connect up. Um, so it's just been an absolute mad rush. Trying to get everything done, but the wind is in. That's been sat for a couple of days now. Everything seems to be uh, gone off nicely. Because we sat on that brickwork. Nice and solid. Bottom drains in. What we're doing now is I'm just getting these coping stones in. Well, I say in, I'm just getting them up. So I can pencil in the cuts. I want to do all my cuts at once. And then what will happen then is all I'll do is clean this off. It's been sealed with paint anyway. And then what we'll do is, so the window went in with the PU18, which is the, you get them six for 24 quid, I think. So compared to the CT1, it's a lot cheaper and it seems to have done the job. There's a few people have mentioned using it and they seem to be all right. But um, yeah, we got a seal there. But again, all I'll use is the PU16 and a bit of no more nails just to hold the coping stones on. I don't want to be pugging them in. So uh, honestly, Adam is from Pond Wizards. So I think he's got a Facebook page, Pond Wizards, and that's with a Z. But he was just absolutely brilliant yesterday. He helped me put the window in. We got the fiberglass in finished, or he got the fiberglass in finished. I didn't film because the guy was working hard and I thought that was a bit, um, bit of a piss take why he's trying to, to work hard that we're uh, stood there with a camera in his face. But yeah, helped me do the bottom drain. We got that all uh, in, glued in, helped me get the window in. But what I'll do is I'll chuck a link up now and uh, show you his business card. It's got his contact details on and some of the services he uh, offers. But while he was here, he actually had a look at some of my other fish, um, looked at the pond set up, my returns, and just gave me some general really helpful advice. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, he's probably forgotten more than I'll ever know. But yeah, he was really, really helpful and just a, a genuinely nice guy. And we're going to be meeting up at the South East Koi Show, so he'll be there too. So, um, yeah, that's Adam Longhurst and it's Pond Wizards and his details are as follows. Just building a bit of framework, just in a similar style to the filter shed. Excuse that, I run out of wood, so that's been wood fillered. But yeah, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get my UV. I was going to say skimmer then. That's terrible. So I'm absolutely shattered. I couldn't get the UV in the filter shed. So uh, obviously it's gone on the back of the pond. But, uh, it was hideous, bright white. So this is going to be coloured the same as the pond, stained the same as the pond, with a black outline similar to that of the filter shed. And obviously two screws. That's removable. But what I'm also going to do is use the um, insulation roll on the inside just to make sure that that's got a bit of cover in the winter time. Got a bit sidetracked. So now everything's moved down from the deck in. I had a chance just to quickly knock up a nice little run for the wabbits. Yeah, look. Happy wabbits. 
Oh, and while we're at it, if you've got kids that are interested in ponds, they're still in their old home, obviously. So I picked this up for 100 quid, second hand. It's just the Blagden. I forget what they call it now. It's the Blagden, but this is the, um, the corner model. It comes with the 5-in-1 3000 Blagden pump and filter. But for the goldfish, I didn't want the goldfish in with a koi. So for the goldfish, it's absolutely brilliant. The kids love it. So they're all in there. It's got a light. I've had this little filter before, and as long as you don't push it too much, it's not too bad. But yeah, water's nice and clear. But yeah, 100 quid I paid for that. It came with everything. I think it's got a little 5 watt UV. Not sure how that's going to uh, cope. But yeah, at night with all the lights on. It's actually very pleasant. So yeah, if you've got little kids that are looking to get into the hobby or want to get involved and look after their own fish, absolutely brilliant. Quick update on the fry. We now got a little Awaza or Pontec filter. Installed, switch the air off for a bit. Many bubbles coming out of the filter. There's a tad overkill. They're all in there, there's about 16. Just dotting around all various sizes. We don't do too much with them, we just sort of let them go about their business and uh, we see what's successful. So, yeah, everyone seems happy. That water's about, what, 200 mil, 250 mil deep. Which is about a metre long. I think I've covered it in one of my other videos, quickly building it. But uh, it's ideal for the fry. And then once they're done in here, we'll move them over to the kids' pond and we'll see how they grow on. But uh, I was talking this month, or this week, should I say, about chucking a fish pond heater on it. Just a little 300 watt jobby. Um, the water's at 20 degrees at the moment. It'd be nice to up it slightly, get them to grow on a bit quicker. I certainly need to think about um, the winter. I say the winter, we know the summer, but you know what I mean. But yeah, they're all happy. Filters in there in a filter bag. Make sure we don't lose any of them. So it's not very interesting colours, but they're pretty special, and it'd be nice to keep at least one of them. There is a nice dark one somewhere. Um, because the fish that they came from, the koi that they came from, are bronze chagoy, um, we actually lost her, so. It'd be nice to get one gem out of it, but we shall see. But yeah, they're all doing good. So what we're doing here, so to buy marble, granite, any of those more uh, unusual stones, if you like, you're going to pay big money. So with these, these are just a riven concrete slab. 600 by 300 mil so slightly wider than i wanted but it's not disastrous excuse me out of breath i've had the old dust mask on but uh, the only problem with the riven slab i don't know if you can see it you have this absolutely lethal because they're made to be joint butted you have this absolutely lethal sharp edge and uh, if you cut yourself wrong on it it does um does make quite a dent. So what I'm doing, excuse the noise. All we're doing is using the normal diamond cutter just to cause a chamfer on the edge. And then it's nice and easy to the touch. Only problem is, obviously, that brings out the uh, the aggregate. So we'll work on that in a minute, and I'll uh, I'll come back and show you how. So that is the coping stones mocked up. So made sure, obviously, either side of the skim up, equal cuts. I don't like things when they're not symmetrical. Same with the corners. All the cuts are symmetrical and then obviously for the window again cuts are symmetrical but uh, you can see what I mean by this uh, what I've done is I've 
chamfered top and bottom and they'll be laid flush with the fiberglass that just means for little hands i don't mean my little hands although they are small but the kids hands i've not got to worry about any damage but now we've got i said to you earlier we've got this exposed aggregate face obviously where they've been struck you're okay they're covered in a bit of cement but, uh, on the front edge when they get cut obviously expose the aggregate which there's not a lot you can do about that but what we're going to do is we're actually going to seal them so i'm going to give them a damn good wash a damn good scrub and then we're going to seal them that'll bring out the ribbon bit the pattern it'll darken them up a bit but also it should go some way to hide in this or is it going to accentuate it one of the two but either way it is what it is so there's 26 slabs around the edge we've got two to go on by the window to act as a seating area but just to give you an idea i managed to find these slabs these ribbon 600 by 300 for 20 quid for everything that i need to do the pond if i was to go with a granite or something like that i'm looking at 300 quid 400 quid just for the copings which um, i haven't got that money and that's not what we're about we're about um, making do Take Steve and borrow. Here's young Evan, give us a wave. Hi! But, uh, yeah, so that's it so far, but what I'll do is I'll get them washed down and then uh, we'll get the sealant on them and then I'll show you. There we go, that'll do for today. So coping stones are on. Just had a wash down. All really cut in place. None of them are fixed down yet. But uh, yeah, they're ready for a sealing. Just give them a quick hose down. What's quite nice is we've got the, uh, the suckers off the window. So I was able to uh, just quickly get a glimpse of what it's going to look like. Only problem is putting the slabs on and putting the surround on now. Obviously my window's getting smaller and smaller. But hey up, never mind, never mind. But yeah, so next job. I want to make these corner supports a bit bigger. I want them coming towards the middle a bit more. A for support, but B, and most importantly, I think it's too open on this side. There's something missing. It's driving me mad. So uh, yeah, so not a bad day's work. Electrician's in tomorrow. Connect all, connect all my electrics up. Got to move the hose, put the meter in. And then we'll fix the slabs down or copings down and very nervously we're then uh, we're ready for filling it's crazy but these you see these i've got two different colors i didn't want to get into the habit of staining all of this because it's a massive upkeep plus it's treated so it's good for a year or two so once this is done oh we'll have around here it's just a bit of a trim and then on the side the start of my boxing in obviously you won't see the bottom my dust all over it and then it'll also have a matching top and as i said earlier it'll be painted the same but, uh, yeah that's all in there again this will have a, a trim around the top so it all matches but, yeah there we go crikey catch you in a bit bonjour everyone good news guess what we're doing ham rails back in filter showers up New stairs are in, but look, we have a pond. We have a finished pond. Got all my Japanese bits up. Last night, late last night, we were uh, fixing the stone down. And then this morning we gave them a couple of coats of sealant. Yeah, these are them old concrete slabs. So uh, they've actually come up. Not bad at all. But yeah, they're just literally grab adhesive to hold them down. And then uh, silicon joints. Yeah, windows obviously in. Spin drifters on there. There's the stall so everyone can get in and out. More Japanesey bits. 
washings on the line. Lovely little lanterns. And then, uh, can't have a koi pond without Buddha. I'll push a shower over that side. It was going in the middle, but uh, it just didn't look right, right in the middle. Plus it sport the view from up the top. So we've pushed it over to the corner. And what that's gonna help do, we've got the two inlets this side. What that's gonna do is, uh, I've got the, the options then. So I can either run off the backy shower and the jet inlet, and then obviously in the summertime, uh, the winter time when it gets cold, we'll just go full power. Yeah, everything's in. Even got the bits and bobs up. The kids got me that for Father's Day. The sign and a couple of koi deck. And it's nice because we've actually got uh, a ghosty that matches those. There's a <coughs> duck. And then this is normally hidden, as you would have seen in the last uh, clip but for now I've got everything closed just so I can do some testing once the water's filled up come around. all the electrics are in so I've got my very pumps got some cable um, cables to tidy I actually had a, a switch box but, uh, following recommendations from uh, a lot of people I've actually gone for the individual plugs Please send if I have any problems. I can uh, just take them out individually. But yeah, media's in the Nexus. I got 100 litres of the K1 and then the standard 20 litres of K1 Micro. But I'm going to up that to once that's boiled for a, a week or so and is floating. We should, uh, we should up that to 200. What you can see in there at the moment, that's just a bit of filter kick. And then also in there, dotted around somewhere, is a load of bio balls. The old uh, Evolution Aqua pom bomb balls, whatever they're called. But yeah, I've got the single air pump running at the moment, just a small one. Both Charles Austin. So that one there is a 40 litre per hour, which is doing the spin drifter. And then that one is a 100 litre per hour. It's actually 120 litre per hour that's running the Nexus on its own. I was say, I've got my very pump, both 20,000. One down here. And then the other one at the moment is a bit open-ended, so at the moment it's coming off of the, um, what's this thing here called? Crying out loud. I'm so tired out. Off of the skimmer. Comes down into the 20,000 very flow. I run that on about 50%, 60%. And that comes along to a T, and the one on the left goes to the return, mid-return jet the hose pipe and the other one goes up to up to my shower so that's a three tier shower in the top it's got a 300 micron sieve and then this level at the moment is just filled with um, alpha grog and the bottom's alpha grog a little strap for cash as i'm sure you can imagine after doing this so uh, one day we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves some bhm or something along them lines b and m is probably more my level at the moment yeah. It's still filling up. The spin drifter's on, doing its job. You can see these. These are a couple of patches that I was... Uh, actually, it wasn't me. I pointed them out. There was a couple of uh, little pin pricks in them. So, uh, Adam, the fiberglasser, he's quite particular. So he obviously wanted to make sure they're okay. And then, round here, just mounted on the hose spinning like a well it's going to get warm it keeps going like this so down there at the moment so 2200 litres have gone into the pond so far and uh, we've pretty much just covered the bottom so estimating around 14,600 I believe it was the Chinese dragon raising a paw but yeah that's it what I'll do is the next video is I'll chuck on the filter and the pumps etc obviously that'll be when it's full and uh, after that we'll um, introduce some fish which i'll uh, i'll show you all but yeah for now this is a finished pond and i'm going to have some dinner and relax a little bit this is my seating area over here there we go 
I haven't showed you this half of the garden because that's for the purposes of the video that's where we've moved all the mess to but yeah all the lighting I should have mentioned that actually all the remote uh, the lighting um, lighting and the sockets and that they're all remote control so uh, we can control them from the house which is a nice thing to have but yeah so there you go catch you in a bit Six in the morning. Not gonna lie. Starting to shit myself. Will it leak? Will it hold water? You'll find out soon. <laughs> Twelve o'clock. Next day, we're getting there. Levels so far are looking like they're gonna work out. But being it, uh, it was this idiot here that did the concrete pad for this. We shall see. Yeah, everything's in. Flushed the first lot of water out the bottom drain, which was absolutely disgusting. But uh, yeah. So there's the water level. And obviously we want to get up to the lip. We shall see. Got bored of watching the pond fill up. So this is an old pine tree. Hopefully you can see it. There we go. Old Christmas tree was in the garden. We've got two here. A couple of bonsai pots and some wire. And hopefully we can turn these into something a, a little prettier. Because at the moment they're a shambles. And we've got loads of Christmas trees that we've planted over the years down the bottom just in this area here. So these two, hopefully, will become buddies of the pond. But yeah, so literally dug out the ground and then just with a garden fork and a screwdriver, just gonna rake through the roots. Done this one, you can see this one. Obviously that's still got your, um, your root ball attached. This one hasn't. And then all you need to do then is just splay these out, have a bit of a hack back nothing too major and have a bit of a hack back so they go in the pots these are i'm just using 100 mil deep pots for these ones because they're quite large trees and uh, hopefully they'll look nice i'll uh, give you an update in a bit unless it looks shit if that's the case i'll uh, we won't mention it again what we're doing now we've got our bonsai mix so this is just a bit of soil some cactus mix some gravel just nice and free draining and then we've got our cactus bowls, we've got our larger gauge wire, excuse the seagulls as always. Um, what we'll do is we'll use this to wrap it up. So once we bury, because obviously the root ball itself is quite big, we will open this up and flatten it out. But uh, it will have a, a tendency to want to push out. So what we do is we have these, we'll roll them over and uh, that'll just hold that in. But I'll show you in two ticks. Everyone seems happy. We just had their night feed, keeping the feed down until the bio builds up a bit of bacteria. And just starting to get a tinge to the water actually. That nice new pond syndrome we all love. Yes, yeah, so I just built a simple ring feeder out of a bit of. Um, 15 mil I think it was or 20 20 mil can't remember but basically plastic pipe four bits of straight 490s sold and welded together jobs are good and that, uh, I've actually put on some of the forums tonight some ideas I've got to have a net we have uh, a lot of animals in the garden worst of all the seagulls that uh, tend to take a liking a few years ago I lost quite a few to, um, to seagulls my attempt at a bonsai for the start off. <laughs> bit mediocre. I'll drop my return, my lower return down a bit. That's down there, you can't really see it at the moment, but so I'll just up the shower. Try and build up some bacteria in it. I'll tell you what, building this pond I've been running on adrenaline. Now it's finished, I feel bloody knackered. 
but uh, the channel won't end here. There's still bits to do on the pond and uh, some new ideas. We've got uh, Steve's pond still to visit. We keep threatening that one. He's planning some more work, so we need to go and see that. And uh, there'll be plenty of things to come with uh, this pond. Some new fish and bits and pieces. We've got the South of England Koi Show coming up in September. Give that a Google if you haven't seen it. Uh, it'll be my first time this year, so looking forward to that. A very tired me. I will say tutty bye. But, uh, thanks for tuning in. Like I say, it's not the end of the channel. We will carry on. Massive, massive thank you to my family for uh, A, putting up with the uh, silly ideas that I have and B, for helping me so much. Um, yeah, like I say, biggest part of that is putting up with my silly ideas. Because I'm not going to lie, in my head, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how could I make this bigger? And it's only been finished a couple of hours, so... But yeah, hey, uh, but yeah, massive, massive, massive thank you for my family. Um, my dad, he's been here working. And uh, my mum and my wife and my kids. I mean, they're going to get to enjoy it with me, but uh, yeah, they've put a massive effort into this as well. And having to put up with me uh, if I'm not working in my day job. So the Saragoy is literally right underneath the phone now. Um, yeah, if they're not putting up with me stuck at work, they're uh, they're putting up with me uh, out here working. So um, yeah, I couldn't do it without them. And uh, I love them lots and lots. But yeah, enjoy. I'll see you on the next one. But yeah, thanks for joining me on the journey. Hopefully you've enjoyed. And uh, hopefully I've been able to show you something that uh, is helpful for your own builds. But yeah, from me and the fish, it's good night. Speak soon. Don't forget, it's groundworks, ain't cookery. <laughs>